this is our first video on chapter 6, which is mostly about government failure. So if you can think of chapter 5 as talking about market failures, failures of the of a laissez-faire laissez -faire free enterprise economy to do what's socially optimal, then chapter 6 is about failures of governments to do what's socially optimal as well. I, I mentioned in one of the chapter 5 videos that just because you have a market failure doesn't mean that government is automatically going to do a better job than the market of allocating resource because governments are run by people and they're also fallible. So let's address the general question why governments fail. And we're going to break up the reasons into three general categories. First is, I think I'll call them special interest groups. Which is a modern way of describing this phenomenon. That governments sometimes act to please small groups of people, not society as a whole. We discussed crony capitalism in one of the previous videos. That was the predominant form, really, of economic organization when Adam Smith was writing. Um, crony capitalism uh, is an example of government failure because the government's acting not in the interest of society as a whole, but just in the interest of a small group of people. Other examples include things that are in modern day illegal like bribery and other kinds of corruption, but also things that in modern days are legal, for example, uh, lobbying and interest groups. Chapter 14 in your textbook is on regulatory capture, and it is going to go into more uh, detail in terms of this kind of, um, I mean, is, is, chapter 14 is not entitled regulatory capture, but it mentions regulatory capture. And regulatory capture is one sort of bad interrelationship between the government and businesses where businesses basically end up controlling the government and the regulators end up being so heavily influenced by the industry that they're regulating that it's really the industry that's in charge of the regulation. It's not the government that's in charge of other regulation. Another reason why governments might fail is they might not have the right information, so right information lacking. Sometimes economic and environmental issues are really complicated. Well, clearly global warming is really complicated. Even scientists don't know what the effect of any particular time path for greenhouse gas emissions is going to be. They've got some ideas and science is getting better and better and better, but there's a lot of uncertainty s s surrounding that. Not nearly as much uncertainty as business and industry would like you to believe, but but still there there is uncertainty. And, and there's often uncertainty around complicated issues of energy and economic policy. So government might not have the right information. This is not actually to say that anybody else has better information. Government often has better information than anybody else, but it still may be incomplete. And you may be facing, to use the, the words that I used in a previous video, a situation of uncertainty, not a situation of risk. So one where we really don't know what the probability distribution, probability distributions are. And the third problem is is what I call an agency problem. This is a technical economic term. Let me explain. There's a difference between uh, politicians and civil servants. So even if the politicians pass good laws, 
there may be a difference in incentives between the politicians and the civil servants who actually enforce those laws. I, I mean civil servants here in a broad sense, not just in general government employees, so not necessarily people who are in the civil service. It could also be uh, judges, for example, who aren't literally in the United States Civil Service, but they're civil servants. Now, the term agency problem is, as I said, a technical economic term that is related to a rather modern concern of economists called a principal agent problem. The first word in principal agent problem is uh, principal spelled at the end with an A-L. That means an important person, not spelled L-E. That means an important idea. The principal agent problem is when you have a principal, like, for example, a, um, a client hiring hiring a lawyer to do something for the client. So the client is the principal and the lawyer is the agent. Or you have a patient hiring a doctor to do something for the patient. So the patient is the principal and the doctor is the agent. Or you have a customer hiring an insurance agent to find the best insurance policy for the customer. So the customer is the principal and the insurance agent is the agent. And that's actually the reason why the, the word agent gets used for the agent, uh, because of people like insurance agents. The, the reason why I write here problem is because a problem can occur if the principal doesn't know as much as the agent does about the quality of work that the agent is doing. If the principal does know as much as the agent about the quality of work that the agent is doing, then there's no problem. For example, doctors sometimes have get sick and have to go to other doctors. And in that case, the patient is also a doctor, and he probably knows as much as the other doctor about what's going on. So then there's no problem. Or a lawyer may get in trouble and have to hire another lawyer to help him out. So if there's no asymmetry of information, then there's no problem. But if there is asymmetry of information, and often there is, then there can be a problem because the principal wants the agent to do something, but the principal doesn't know whether the agent's really doing something, rather really doing it. And the agent may then have a different different incentives than the principal. So, for instance, the client, the customer hires the insurance agent to find the lowest price insurance policy, but maybe the insurance agent instead uh, finds a policy which isn't the lowest, but uh, provides some sort of uh, benefit to the insurance agent. Now, I don't think it would be legal for an insurance company to uh, to pay a kickback to the insurance agent. Um, and so I don't think actually if you go to an insurance agent these days, there there's really a big problem there. But l let's say um, you hire a dentist to take care of your teeth and the dentist says, oh, there's something wrong with your teeth and you need $1,500 worth of dental work. Well, how do you know that the dentist is saying that because it's really true or if the dentist just wants to earn a lot of money uh, taking care of your teeth when your teeth actually don't need that kind of dental work. So that's an example of the kind of reason why we, we can call it a principal agent problem, because in that case the patient has no idea whether the dentist is telling the truth or not. Now, in the context of government, you can think of the politicians as being the principal and the civil servants as being the agents. The agents may not have the same incentives as the politicians to to do things, and in that case you've got an agency uh, problem. Uh, in uh, uh, when Donald Trump was uh, president, he sometimes referred to the deep state. I suppose that's one way of describing this tension between politicians and civil servants. 
although uh, I, I, I don't think that most of the time when he was describing these kinds of things, he was describing things accurately. So what we're going to do next is talk about some examples of government failures, but we'll do that in the next video.